All right. First action in a half court setting is drive and kick. So if you've done this a little bit with me already on the court, I talk about it as a circle. So if the ball dribbles right with my right hand, all of my teammates are moving to their right. And we're going to talk about that on the internal, like postman position later on in the course. But for this week, we're all guards. We're all at the three-point line. When the ball drives right into the paint, all the guards move to their right outside the three. We are creating space and open shots for ourselves. And again, if we're going for the order of operations approach, we want to just drive and score that layup every time until help defense comes so hard to stop us that they leave our teammate wide open that's a shooter and we kick it out to him. So the basic circle movement is move the same direction as the hand the ball handler is dribbling with. That's the clearest way I've found to read that. It's not which direction they're really dribbling, because sometimes they'll change hands but still be going the same direction. They, it's not based on the defense. It's just based on your teammate with the ball. Which hand did they dribble with? And I talk about it like turn signals is my favorite analogy. Blinky, blinky, blink. We're all going this way. Or blinky, blinky, blink. We're all going that way. Watch the hand they dribble with. Tells you where to go. One of my favorite things to work on. And then we have some exceptions to the rule. So if you're next to the ball and they're driving middle, oftentimes it's best to reverse the circle and end up circling behind them instead of going away like we normally would. You circle behind, you actually have some protected space because they, by driving, trapped two defenders, yours and theirs, and you're actually wide open behind the play for them to dish it back to you or pitch it back, as we call underhand pass. Um, another one is a hammer pass. So if they drive baseline and you're opposite, far away from the ball, it's better for you to go, instead of they drive right and you move right up to the top of the key, they drive right and you move left to be in their line of sight down the baseline and find a pass. And you know, these are some of the basic pieces to get you started with. What we eventually want to evolve to is the ultimate goal of what I call creating a window, which just means you are always moving, which direction doesn't really matter. You know where your defender is, and all you want to do is not be putting that defender between you and the ball. You want to move to create a window of space where the passer can find you. And if you follow the basics of move right when they drive right, move left when they drive left, and then you get familiar with where some exceptions are actually helpful, you get pretty good at this very quickly. And you can always make yourself available as a shooter anytime your teammate drives. And you can find a lot of ways to get wide open shots with just doing that alone. So let's see what that looks like in a video demonstration here. Get to see coaches in action. Simple version first, driving right, moving right, catch and shoot in the corner. Simple as it sounds, you can get a lot of shots of this, but the defense knows it, so we need some counter moves because the defense catches on that this might be an obvious pass. Filling behind, same rule, just the opposite direction. He drove left, I move left, catch and shoot shot. Moving in the shape of a circle. Best way to remember this. And we'll get into some details of footwork as well as precision of how to move into the pass. A lot of different ways to get there. And footwork as we catch it and as we pass it is actually what makes this work really smoothly. Here's the same idea, other side of the floor. And this is one of our counter moves. Defense catches on that we are going to get stuck and pivot in the paint and have to kick it back out. And when the defense overplays the pass back out, we back cut on the other side of the rim. We end up with kind of a post player pass, which we'll talk about in the coming weeks as the playmaker. This is our hammer pass. We're driving right, and the shooter is moving to the left. We'll see this again in slow motion. You watch where I'm spacing to. I'm getting out of the corner initially. I could move either direction, and as he drives right, I'm moving further toward the baseline in his line of sight. So he drove right, I moved left to be more available. Uh, same thing happening here. A little less experienced player, but they are backpedaling into the corner. They're getting there just in time. This is the slot drive reverse circle that I talked about. I'm going to actually pause here and go back to this one. So driving left, normally this shooter would go left, but because the defense is getting sucked into the paint, 
the ball handler actually ends up acting as a screen. So defense is down in the paint, shooter circles up over top, and we get kind of a short distance pass. We'll work on some techniques to get that. But big advantage catch back there because we've got that protected bubble of space. And then seeing the back cut again here as a um, counter move to the overplay, taking away the pass because they know the ball is stuck. We're back cutting to the rim. Another kind of evolution of this is what we call hockey assists, what we're seeing here. It's just an extra pass. After we kick it out, defense knows it and they're covering it. We swing it, lateral pass outside the perimeter to the next open shooter. And this works really, really good. Here's a combination of both. We had the hammer pass available, filled toward the corner, and then we came back to find the ball. When it swung out, we got a hockey assist, second pass into shot. So lots of fun stuff here. As we start to combine these, it uh, gets more and more interesting and more and more fun. Let's jump over to triangle cutting next. <laughs> 